Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and you're not. And I'm Paul Kidwell. We're here today with a really cool toy. And this is a vertical axis wind turbine, which I think is just awesome cool. And it was made by Laura, um, one of our Chicago members. Mm -hmm. And she wrote in a question about how to do the rectification for this, because it's like three phase or six phase. And she needed to figure out how to do that. Yep. So I did the, like I, I had it printed out with the viewer mail on that from mm -hmm. her, but I figured she's a member and she's cool and she brings us good toys. So I got mm -hmm. you something better than, than the, the email. Really? Yes, I got you this. Hang on. What's that? Laura! Oh, you got the person. I got, I got the Laura. Okay. Right. So here, have a Laura. Hello, Laura. Hi, Paul. This is, this is okay. Laura from Chicago. This is Paul mm -hmm. from Under a Bridge. Under you two have <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. Um, I was looking at your first initial one here. Mm -hmm. Right. So what I did was I basically I stole instructions off the internet for a 10-year-old's version of a wind turbine, vertical axis wind turbine, and uh, from uh, re engineer dot, uh, or energy dot CA, which we'll figure out where that is later. And I assembled this, and I was able to get the light to come on, the diode, which was really cool. Um, but I didn't know how to get the energy from alternating current into DC, and uh, apparently I need something called a three-phase rectifier. Hey, it works. Stunning, isn't it? I can yes. build. So, so what I, I need from you is help in understanding how to build a three-phase rectifier, what exactly that means, and what kind of tools I have to have. All right. Well, you uh, brought this in. One of the many instructions I grabbed from online, yes. Windmill plant. And they have a diagram that looks like this here. And what they're showing is six diodes mm -hmm. in pairs. And I have a little bit of a problem with their diagram here because the way they're showing the diodes, it's a little difficult to understand. Uh, yeah, um, I don't understand it at all, which is why I'm here. I would, have, I would have been happier if they had rotated the diodes 90 degrees. But I have some diodes right here. Sweet. And um, we need six of them, so two, four, six. Why do we need six? Well, you have three separate coils. And they're coming in here on these three wires. Mm -hmm. So at any given instant, as your magnets are passing over your coils, one of these wires is going to be positive, one of these wires is going to be negative. Right. And what you want to do is collect all the positives on one side and all the negatives on the other. Okay. So if, for instance, this middle wire were positive, and say this one over here were negative, mm -hmm. your current would come flowing in this wire, hit these diodes, be blocked by the one on the left, the one on the right would conduct, so your current would flow through this wire down here to the positive side of your battery. Okay. The rest of the circuit, your wire would, the current would come out here, and then seeing this one is negative, it would go down this wire, and then go through that diode and out. So that would complete your circuit. And whichever combination you make of positive and negative here, the diodes would keep or would make sure that the current flowed to and from the right place. Now, diodes have stripes on them, mm -hmm. and the stripes are represented in the diagram by the little line. Oh, okay. So, if we took a diode here, yeah, there's a little bit of tape or residue left on the end of the wires. And a diode there, so you connect those two together. Oh, okay. I can get it up here to so your midpoint goes out to your coil and I would orient them more like this so your positive ends up here your negatives ends down here and you have three sets of these all the positives and all the negatives get tied together your three windings from your armature your stator rather go into the midpoints between the diodes. Okay, so in the case where we have a little bit more complex stator, which this is only four coils, um, right. and they're all going in the same direction, but in the case where we have a more complex stator where we have three wires that we're dealing with, yeah. these would get crimped together there the end, or they'd be yes. put together because they're the end, and then the diodes here. would be connected to the start here in some way. Yes. Right, and so, and I numbered which coils belong in which groups. All right, the diodes, make it so you don't have to worry about which one is which, just that you have the correct end okay. of your coil. So 
each one of these, each one of these wires would get, where did the diodes go? There, get one of these on it. Okay. And this is enamel coated wire, but yes. basically you would make that a nice solder joint. And our stripe is up here on the top, so positive, positive negative. negative. And you repeat that two more times for Wash, our other two repeat. wires. And then connect all the positives together and all the negatives together. And then, basically I'm arranging the diagram more like this. Okay. Imagine your diodes are side by side rather than stacked, but mm -hmm. positive at the top, negative at the bottom, you use that to charge your battery. Okay. And they have power being tapped off here to light a little diode, and I assume that's going to be another light controlled by a switch. So right. that's, that's basically it in a nutshell. It's relatively simple. Um, so what would we, these actually be in, in, the, in a real situation? What would these be connected to? How would I be assembling this? Um, I would usually, usually in a real situation, um, assuming you have like a full size generator, these would be much larger. These mm -hmm. are just like one watt diodes. So for this uh, stator you have here, the size of the wire, that should be more than enough to do, you know, whatever you're going to do. Um, for a full size generator, you need diodes that are substantially larger. I might have something. Yes, I just, my, just laying around. Just laying around. I don't have the big ones. Well, I have some that are slightly larger. Yeah, I thought I have some 275 amp diodes, but those are serious diodes. Those are more serious. I had to and, build something larger. And I have one other that actually bolts onto a heat sink. So. Something like that would be more in line for like a car alternator size sort of uh, stator. Because that's really what we built here, right? It's like an alternator. Exactly. Correct. I, 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 hang on, YouTube hey. commenter alert, okay? <laughs> because you said, I have some 275 amp diodes. And you do, and I've seen them, and I know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. but that isn't it. And you need to clarify because there's gonna be 300 people that are already writing in their comment right now. They're ready to hit send. They're gonna say, that's not I'm scared. No, no, you need to get off the internet because you're a hack. Yeah. All right. I don't have a one end. Those number. are like a 10 amp diode. Uh, yeah, these are 10 amp. Yeah. The die. I have a set of one and four zero forty six diodes. They sell for like it's about as big as my leg. It's it's yeah. It's, it's beefy. Yeah. But I have like but that isn't it. That this is, is, that is it. not. A this is not it. Diode. No, no. It's like a 10 amp diode. Here, no. I'll see if I can find the end number for it. That's um, like. These are totally, nobody made these. They were never made. These diodes don't exist. There are no numbers on these at all. This one is a CTU630R. There's absolutely no marking on this at all, Paul. It's a, it's a little a, mica on it. Mm -hmm. So it's That's old. That's the insulator. But, but yeah, these, these, are, these yeah. are ancient. All right. I just, I saw it. I was like, oh my God, this, this is going to be so bad. I, no. No. Anyhow. We want to thank all the wonderful YouTube commenters for their continued support of our videos. <laughs> yes. That being I'm, done. I'm going to go away now. Die on fire! Right. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. I'm going to give you a bunch of diodes. Okay. To, uh, so you can get this thing wired up. And, uh, and then what happens? Um, well, as I said, connect plus and minus here to your battery and you can charge your battery. So in this case, with something really tiny like this, what would we... What we, what oh, what would you mount these on? Yeah. You can get, at, um, well, Radio Shack still sells perf board, and it's a board with a bunch of holes in it, and you... Is that the same as they call, what they call breadboard? It's the exact same stuff. Okay. But, you know, you, you bend your, your leads, and you stick it through the holes in the board. So these would go, we would bend... Well, we would untwist them, and... And then, and then this, okay. But you. We need a breadboard. We need a breadboard. We have to get a breadboard now. We have a yeah. breadboard. Where is that? No, I mean a piece of the perf board. Oh. Okay. We, we, we'd be making it permanent, not temporary. Okay. Just, you have one. It was right. It was sort of over there. It wasn't when we did the last shoot. I thought you left it here. I don't think we left it here. You, you had a bread. No, it was big. You had. Well, it's it's some of this. I know it's some of this stuff. All right, I got a bunch of resistors on there, but no, I don't have any more. Yeah, it is. That's my nice meter. Wow. You got logic in stuff? Mine. Go away. Okay. Like, okay. 
Anyhow, yeah, you, you, get, you get some of this material. And as you can see, for the resistors, I just stuffed them through the holes. Uh -huh. And you do the same thing with the, the diodes. These are soldered? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a big voltage divider. I was trying to measure high voltage with a regular meter. So basically, your high voltage clips on the leads out here, and your meter clips on the leads that are going around the edge there. OK. So I can use like a 20 volt meter to measure 20,000 volts or so, something so like that. So the next that. time we talk about this, I have to have a breadboard. Yes. All right. And we can stuff the diodes in and get it all wired up, actually. If you have your, ooh, we have uh, come undone a little yeah, here. Yeah, we're going to come undone a lot because this thing has been all over the place. All mm -hmm. right. Well, if you can get I have to this, make a new one, I think. Yes. And I need to figure out a good way to, um, for the rotation of the, the blades to happen so that there's less friction. This, because this okay. is such a rudimentary model, we don't actually have um, anything in there in terms of bearings or grease or any of that stuff. All right. that, um, you know, so I'm thinking, do, what is, do we have the motor? Yo, Doc, huh? do we have any of the hard drives that we took apart? The dissected hard drives? Yeah, I think so. Grab one. Oh, see, okay. There's a difference between do we have this and do, do we you have, have it handy? He has to assess you whether it is. He has to assess whether we have one first before he can tell you to do something with it. Hey, you know what would go really well with the video you're making right now? What's that? Okay. That. Oh, now inside a hard drive, the oh, hard drive sweet. motor looks like that. Yes. Oh, we, well, yeah. not always, but a but lot of modern day ones. Yes, do. and that's a three-phase motor right there. I mean, it's all coiled out for that. Are you sure it's and three? Generally, yeah. Okay. The drive um, motor. Do you I have, have? I have various bits and pieces of hard drive. Okay, because what, what do you want? The the platter motor. Yeah, you're screwed. You're screwed. I got, I got, okay. I got nothing. The hand me the hand me the stuff you, you got over there just to show. Yeah, I got I got nothing. Um, the the platter motor on the ones that we took apart, okay. the ones that right. the IBM okay. ones. Yeah. Just yeah. They, so now, that is the platter this, motor. It comes. This yes. is the right. thing. Yeah, I need this. And Can I you know, because it? there's no bearing there. No, oh, this one. So this one problem. is what you do is you, you take apart a hard drive and you get rid of the discs and the spacers, and you're left with this. And depending on the hard drive, um, this one here is just literally press fit in, but it'll have this down inside there. There's magnets in there. Oh boy. But. Um, what you would do is, the ones, they have a, a large flange around about that big. You drill a hole in your board big enough to mount the hard drive motor right there. You got these screw holes here to serve as mounting, and this is a real high precision bearing down there. This one isn't, but the ones I'm, I, I have like I have a dozen of them back at my office that I've taken apart. Well, they're not doing us any good here. Well, that's true. We have to do that. But, Anyhow, that'll give you a good bearing mount for your rotor. And I mean, it's a high precision bearing and it's got mounting holes and everything already on it. All right, so now we have the idea for, or the concept for the three phase rectifier is starting to gel. I'm starting to understand what you're talking about. And I think that we would have to build um, something a little bit larger and maybe put that together on a breadboard the next time uh, I come out to visit. That'd be good and I look forward to seeing that. Thanks. All right, well. Well, there we have our three favors rectification uh, discussion. We'll, uh, we're going to be continuing with the diode videos shortly. I got some stuff for that. So we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.